this lesson, I'm going to teach you the Georgia On My Mind chords. Guitar diagrams are gonna be on the screen as I teach this chord by chord. And also I'm going to give you alternate options for some of the chords, different ways to play the same chord, as well as even alternate chords altogether. So you can choose to get more of a jazz sound, more of a traditional sound, make it your own a little bit. And I'll teach a little bit of the theory and why that works along the way, which will help you remember it longer and learn it faster and understand that when you look a song like this up and maybe you find a few different versions from a few different books or places online, there might be different chords at different spots of a song and it can be confusing. Why does that exist? We'll talk about some of that and you'll get to play with the options yourself. And the best part is these are very, very playable chords. These are all in the open position in the key of C. So anybody who plays guitar a little bit should be able to play these chords. And if you wanna play it in any other key, you can just use a capo and I'll talk about that more in the lesson. Georgia On My Mind is a classic and timeless tune and I'm glad you're here to learn it with me. Let's do it. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com where I have courses that help guitarists express themselves more freely and confidently through improvisation, arranging, fretboard theory, mastery, and much more. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and follow. I have new lesson videos every week. At the end of this video, I'll share two very special extra bonus tips for you. One, I'll show you how to connect some of these chords with bass line movements, which can really enhance the feel of a chord progression and bring it to life a little more. And I will share with you a method so you can easily learn future chord progressions of other tunes with just a few movable chord shapes. It's really cool. Stick around to the end for those two. Now let's dive into the lesson. All right, I'm excited to show you this. Here's what you might find if you look this tune up or this or this. This is what I was talking about, how some of these chords are different. Some of these are even in different keys. You have all these symbols. What do they mean? Of course, it'd be great to learn that eventually. But for this tune, maybe you just want to get it in your hands with some simple uh, open string chords to play. That's what I'm going to show you in this lesson. If you look up some of these chords, you won't necessarily find the recommendations that I'm giving you here. I've really arranged this to make it as easy to play as possible and to sound as good as possible uh, for any guitarist. So maybe you're one of these <laughs> overwhelmed or stress emoji characters uh, trying to learn this song. So here we are with the first uh, four measures of Georgia on my mind. And just a quick note, don't be thrown off if you do know how to read music. This is written in the key of F, which is very commonly the key that it is played in. The famous um, Ray Charles version was in the key of G and you can play it in either of those keys if you do what we're doing in this lesson and you take a capo and put it on the fifth fret and play all the same chords I'm going to show you here because they're almost all open string chords. Put the capo on the fifth fret to play it in the key of F, which is the most common key it's played in where you'll see it written out on sheet music most often. Put it on the put the capo on the seventh fret to play it in the key of G, which is the key that Ray Charles uh, recorded it in. Uh, so this is all written in the key of F, but the chord shapes I'm gonna give you are in the key of C. So don't be thrown off by that if you do know how to read music. I am thinking of this music. Uh, this is great so we can see the kind of the contour and mainly also the lyrics and just kind of line the chords up with it. So just don't pay attention to that. Um, and if you don't know how to read music, great, then you can just see where the words are and see the kind of roughly the notes go up and down. Um, I'm thinking of this regardless of the key that it's written in. I'm thinking of this as because I know it's the key of F, this is a little side note here, that this is the third note in F and this is the fifth note in F. So I know that regardless of the key, that those are the first two notes of it. And the C chord, Georgia, the reason I'm even saying all of this is because it can be nice for some of us who aren't super comfortable with singing, which I am not, to have a starting note in the chord that you're playing. So this note right here, this second fret, fourth string, and then the open third string are the first two chords, Georgia, right there. So in general, I'm thinking of the relationship in the key uh, when I'm looking at the sheet music and I can translate it to any other key. I won't say any more about that right now. So the first chord, you can play that normal C chord, which I actually prefer, and everything along the top is going to be my preference and my recommendation and how I kind of prefer to play it, but I'll sometimes switch out some of the chords with other chords and the chords below are gonna give you other options that you can play with yourself. So if you want a more colorful, jazzier option for the first chord, then you can play this C major seven that I wrote down here. You just lift off one of those fingers, easier to play, very nice. Georgia is the top one. Georgia is the bottom one. And 
part of your homework will be to sing it for yourself so you so you do a better job than, than me but i will sing throughout this video to give you context because that's important for the song uh the second chord is e7 georgia georgia Oh, it already has that emotional pull to it that that type of chord has. It's so beautiful. This chord is not in the key. This chord is actually, E is in the key of C, but the E chord in C is usually E minor. So turning it into this E7 just has this wonderful tension to it. Now you can play any version of C E7. So the most common version of E7 would probably be this shape. So that'll sound like Georgia, Georgia, instead of the version I have on the top, which is more open depending on the guitar you play you might find that to be a little muddier i love it though i love this version of e7 this one this pinky note here that's the second string third fret that is the melody note so you have georgia open e third fret on the second string da, da. that's the melody so you might like playing that if you want to kind of track the melody with that finger otherwise the melody is this note here this open d string let's go on to one other option this is the jazz arrangement version if you are looking up in more of a jazz context listening to jazz versions of it you'll get this b minor seven flat five which is also called half diminished it can also be written with a circle and a line through it but most importantly you just want to get your fingers on these and use your own taste and preferences to play what you want to hear so georgia georgia okay we get this chord that is put in front of the E7. I put E7 right here because then right after this, you do have to play E7, but you can do either of those. So it doesn't matter. There's some kind of E7 after this. So if you want more of the jazz feel, then that extra chord in there. Side note, that is very much uh, something that just makes jazz harmony sound like jazz harmony is putting extra chords in front of the typical chords and adding more harmonic motion that way and there you go that's how jazz arrangements are often made or jazz harmony is often turned into what we think of as as jazz progressions so normal a minor chord um, next and then a minor over g these two no alternate options you really just got to play them this way and it's a lovely motion here so we got georgia georgia Okay, so slash chords, A minor over G, the, this means it's an A minor chord and G has to be the lowest note. It has to be. If it's written that way, it's it's in, it's arranged this way. So now we have this A, boom, and then the bass line goes down, but the A, but the chord stays A, A minor. So that's really important. And then we go to this chord. It's just a D chord. If you know a normal D chord, this can be moved all the way up here to the top string. These two strings are both E. So that note move down here makes it a D over F sharp. Okay, so it's an inversion of a D chord. But look at what the bass line is doing now. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, it's really moving on purpose. I'll, I'll show you just ahead a little bit, but then it moves down another half step. Do, 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 do. And the next screen is gonna show a chord that boom. Okay, so just the chords themselves as we want to play them have this intentional bass line when you see slash chords it's asking for an intentional movement of a bass line you don't have to have to play them it just significantly enhances the the harmonic motion and feel of the progression so now we got um i'll go from the top georgia georgia the whole day D over F sharp. Now we could do this version, D7 over F sharp. The whole day through. Okay, if you want a little more spice on it, this right here, this note, is the melody. Okay. The whole day through. Okay, so my pinky's playing the melody here, but this open D is also the melody, so you can make this a seven chord instead. The whole day through. Okay. And if you want to get the extra jazzy version, we're going to add a nine to that chord. And it's called D9 over F sharp. And you just make this shape. And now the D is not the melody note and the D note, the root of the chord are not even in that shape, but you're still going to sing the root of the chord. So it's all those notes plus the note you're singing. And it makes it a D9 over F sharp. The whole 
day through. Okay, so your choice. My favorite chord is next. Just on, whoops, saying it wrong, that's okay. And that's gonna happen in this tutorial a little bit. Um, that F minor six, so gorgeous right there. Just a beautiful chord, I'll do it from the whole day through. The whole day through. I got a little bit of that open E in there, that's okay. If I play it with my fingers. The whole day through. Just on Okay, so that's beautiful chord. We'll move on here. E minor seven, just an old. You can also play E minor, normal E minor triad, old, or E minor seven like this, old. Any of those interchangeable, totally fine. Old sweet song keeps A seven. It's the only option there. Georgia. Okay, D minor seven or D minor triad. Georgia. Go with what you like to the sound of, but they're so interchangeable that really the what you should do is go with what you can play the easiest because you're going to sound better doing that anyway. Or if you really like the sound of something and you can't play it smoothly, then of course just work on it and get it smooth. Um, so Georgia on my G13, you you would probably not find this shape if you look up G13 or G7. This is preferable to me, that shape right there. I love it. It's a G7 chord with the open E on top, which makes it 13. You can just play this very typical open string G7. I don't like that note on the top being the top note. That same note is the fourth string in here. So it's the same chord plus an extra note here, but that really typical kind of cowboy chord G7 just doesn't do it for me. Uh, that note kind of stands out on the top. Feel free to play it that way though, especially if you're just strumming through and singing, it's gonna sound right, it's gonna sound great. Okay, so you can choose. Okay, E minor here, and as we know, E minor can have these alternate options. I'm choosing this E minor seven here, and then on, uh, just an E minor triad here. I just like the sound of it there. Um, so we'll play through some of this in a second. And then totally separate chord, you can play the C major landing there. And you might do that accidentally because it's such this arrival point. That is the conclusion of the phrase where it feels like it's supposed to go to C minor, uh, C major, the main chord again. But it goes, it goes to this E minor chord often to kind of uh, elongate the sensation of, we're, we're kind of delaying the resolution, which I did a video on recently. And there's some related stuff. If you want to check out the theory of what's called delayed resolution, there's a link in the description or you can search for delayed resolution uh, and you should be able to find that video. So uh, now we'll go. Uh, oh, sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. That's that E minor, okay? On my mind, E minor seven, on my mind, that other E minor seven, and then this C major, on my mind. No matter what you do though, you have to go to this A7. Okay, so the E minor goes to A7. Mind, or mind. Okay, get it? Because that A7, you can hear it wanting to go somewhere. It's going to our D minor. Georgia on my fancy chord here. Mind, oops. I gave you an extra uh, D minor option first. Of course, you can play D minor seven or D, D uh, minor triad. G seven sharp five. That's the shape I'd recommend. Mind. Really cool uh, chromatic note, which means that note is outside of the key. You can kind of hear it being spicy like that, as people often call it. Here's an alternate option for that, though. This is not a G seven chord, but it's a G augmented chord. G plus plus means augmented, which means it's a chord, a triad, one, three, five, but the five is sharp. Um, that shape is quite nice if you want to do the non seven chord version. The reason I like that one is I like the uh, the altered note to be a little lower in the register. So you can decide for yourself. So, oh sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Georgia on my mind. Pretty nice, right? Let's keep going through it. Uh, this is repeating from the first, the uh, first verse, right? So it's like the A section and the A section again. So here we go. Georgia, Georgia, all the same options, same options. A song of you, 
D7, choosing the G D7 version. You, there's that chord. Uh, you comes as sweet and clear as. All the same stuff, so moving through it. Moonlight, okay, different melody thing. Moonlight, but same chords. Through the now. Here's a moment to talk about. I really, really prefer this very much because the top open E note is the melody. Through the as opposed to this, which would be a half step up from that melody note. Through the okay, you can do them both. The that's very much the that's the note that's in the chord, and it's very much the melody. Through the that's called an extension. It's also called a color note. That's the 13 of the chord. So it is technically right next to the flat seven of the chord. So depending on what chord you play, it might sound better or worse when you sing along with it. And I love this one. Okay, so that's the one I recommend. Okay, through the pines. This is so cool what's happening next. We have this uh, going away. We're gonna go away from that what's called the tonic chord that we resolve to. Pines. Okay, with this F7 chord, or you can do this F minor six chord, or you can do this chord shape, which is B flat nine. Don't sweat about all the names and stuff. I'm trying, uh, my goal here is giving you, if you wanna just look at the shapes, play them with your hands and, and play a great version of this song, that's the point. But of course I wanna share extra tidbits along the way to get you uh, curious or, you know, help fill in knowledge that you might be interested in. Um, look at how this B flat nine is almost the exact same as the F minor six, right? It has just that bottom note is on a different string, but the rest of the notes are the same. Okay, so this is one of those things that's very related to the delayed resolution. If you flipped, this is just for fun to tell you about this here. If you flip the order of these, you played any of these here and then went to C, that's delayed resolution. So through the pines, excuse my singing, I'll do another version of it. I'll do the F minor six. Through the pines, right? That's not how the song goes, but that's a little taste of, oh, different harmonizations, right? We have this melody note here, this note. The root of the chord, or the root of the key, C in this case. Any other chord that has a C in it, da, 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 you can kind of go to that chord and then come back to the C. You get this beautiful um, harmonic motion happening, and it really is nice rather than just sitting on the C. So choose any of these that you like. I recommend that kind of simple F7. If you're strumming this here, I'll go back to this. If you're strumming this, just be really careful not to get these top two strings in it. Those top two strings can't be in it. So you gotta strum carefully and maybe try to mute those other strings a little bit. So that, that is a tricky part of it. But uh, then we go back to C either version, right? You can always play C major or C major seven. I should have put that here. You can also play C major seven here. Anytime you see a C in this case. So through the Okay, uh, moving on to get to the next section, which is now the B section. We wanna play any of our E7 chord shapes again. And then I love the B section. Other arms. And you can use A minor triad or A minor seven. Other arms. If you wanna floatier, open, maybe more jazz sound, you use the seven. Um, oops, and I'm sorry, this should be called A minor seven. So. It, every time that comes up, because I use the same graphic, it's gonna say A7. This shape is a minor seven, not A7. My apologies, I'm glad I caught that right now. So this is A minor, A minor seven. Okay, moving on, we gotta go to our E7 chord. I'll go back one. So, other arms reach out to me. I'm gonna go back to the A minor. Um, and I'll jump to that just so you know A minor is coming. So here's an actual different chord option. Okay, so other arms, that's the E7. Other arms, I love that one. The D minor six is a little more traditional harmony. The E7 is a little more uh, the jazz version that's often played, but it works either way. And hopefully you're getting a little sense of harmony now where, oh, the melody note 
needs to be in the chord, and if it is, you can play any chord that the melody note is inside of. That doesn't mean it's going to sound right always, but it's it's going to sound like at least the melody fits with it. So reharmonizing is choosing whatever other chords that the melody can still fit with. So other arms, that note da, is inside that E7, or other arms. Oh, that's a D note I'm singing, and D minor six has D in it because it's the root of the chord. Bum. Cool. How about this one? Other arms. Ooh. F minor six, that favorite chord of mine that we've used in other places. Well, it has an open D in it. That's the melody note. Okay. Other arms, reach out to me. So nice, right? Now, I'm just recommending the E7 because it's so. Uh, I think more common that people play that and it sounds great. I do really love this D minor six though. So feel free to play with those. And if you don't want to just do everything on the top row and that's fine. Other arms reach out to me. Okay, what's the next chord? We can always do a minor seven, not a seven, a minor seven instead of a minor triad. And look at this, this shape here and this shape here physically are the same on different string sets. So if you see my hand here, I'm playing, I'm playing a minor seven and then E seven. Right? So if you want that tr transition, you can play this one to this one to this one, and you're just doing that same physical shape, which is nice. Hey, look, you can even use it here. Right? So you can play that and then go, other arms reach out to me. Then you got to go to this F7. F7. The F7 there sounds really cool. Um, other arms reach out to me. And again, the F7 is tricky to strum, but you're going to want to play that chord there. So you want to work on that. Um, here's the next part of the uh, B section coming up again. This is a minor seven, as I keep saying, just to make that very clear. Um, same thing though. Other eyes smile. Okay. Now I just put the same options here for you here. So you know those now. Um, here you want to definitely play a minor seven. Uh, which is the the voicing where the third string is open because that's in the melody, right? So when chords have these extensions or sevens or uh, extra things, the the time when it really really should be there is when it's in the melody. Um, and if you don't put it there, that's okay because you're gonna sing that and the chord, the harmony in the moment. Technically, if I played A minor triad here, um, I guess I didn't throw, write that in as an option, but if I wrote, if I played A minor triad here. You still are going to sing the flat seven of that chord. So technically during that moment of music, the total sonic sound, you have an A minor seven sound, right? So the correct way to write that chord as the harmony would be, oh, this is A minor seven during this section, right? You can still play whatever type of A minor you want. A lot of little digressions here. Okay, so. Um, Other eyes smile tenderly. Very cool spot there where it goes the note out of the key. Uh, so play that these two shapes there for sure. Back to A minor. Uh, still in peaceful. Okay, here definitely play the E7. You don't get those other options there, just an E7 either version. I love this though. I'll go up another chord. Still in peaceful dreams I see. Oh, so nice. C6. Okay, it's like a C shape, but you have this note on the third string second fret also thrown in there look at how that right there by the way this is my arrangement of it so a lot of this is overall very typical of the harmony but i'm making choices based on all the ways it can be harmonized and the most common versions that are played out there and then i'm adapting to make it also very easy to play and sound great so i'm choosing this is not always the typical choice this probably goes away from the most common arrangements out there a little bit I'm choosing this C6 with the root there. And this is correct, by the way, I'm not saying I'm doing different harmonizations. I'm just uh, choosing voicings that fit the best. This goes down a half step so we get that bass movement a little bit. Okay, that B7 sounds so good. What you will often see is a chord before that. I talked about how jazz harmony adds chords before other chords. So, um, still, uh, still in peaceful dreams I see. You'll often get that, a chord before the B7, but I think it sounds so good in this arrangement where we want to play these simple open string chords 
And I just think it sounds better anyway. So I really like that. I'm still in peaceful dreams I see. Okay. This is a really hard chord to get to just fingering wise. So be patient with it. Uh, Cause you gotta get your pinky down on that fifth string note there, but you'll get it. So just, just give it a little more time than other chords. Okay, here we have our regular multiple options of E minor and then our A7. You'll see these two chords often go next to each other, E minor, A7. That's a two and a five um, in a key. So I'll play this and then we'll move on to the next page. Still in peaceful dreams I see the road leads back to... Okay, here's a tricky part. It's gonna go, uh, you, that's what the melody does, you. But this chord, D minor seven, which is very much the chord that needs to be there, it's a correct chord, that doesn't have this note in it. Okay, so the note we're singing in this key is E, that chord does not have it in there. You can also play a normal D minor, okay? But if you wanna include that note in it, you could play this shape, which is technically D minor nine. Then you get, Notice the open E string. Then you get that melody on the top. So, uh, you, your choice though. It's just if you feel like this clashes with the other two clash with it, it's gonna sound good no matter what if you kind of drill it and ingrain it in yourself. Ooh, there's that G13 I like. You can also play a normal G7. Okay, moving on. Georgia, all this stuff we know. Georgia, no peace. I find there's that F minor six. No peace I find just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Okay, here's where the very end goes different. If you're gonna cycle back and repeat again, which is so common, right? Maybe someone's gonna take a solo, maybe you're gonna just sing it again, maybe you're gonna go back and just play the chords, whatever. If you're gonna cycle back, this is this spot here is called the turnaround, okay? There's that repeat sign there. And here's what I recommend for that, this, 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 this along the top, but this has a lot of options here. So on my mind, Georgia, right? So you can go right back to it. This, I love this E flat diminished seven, but this is also very common. Um, on my mind, remember this is a minor seven, sorry again for that mistake. Mind. Very classic progression there. Oh, sorry. And then, it's kind of a, a classic turnaround sound. I like the more jazz E flat. Uh, diminished seven there. You can also play A minor triad. Your choice. And again, just do the top ones if you want to do that. Now, if you're actually going to end the song, here's how you would end it. You would land on C. I didn't write it in, but you can always play C major seven instead. So on my mind. And then you want to play one of these chords that goes away from the harmony and then comes back to it, which are these options that we've talked about before. And then you land back on C. Uh, on my mind. So notice I'm going from here, skipping to here, right? Because this is the turnaround. Okay, usually we'd see like a line showing first ending, second ending, but uh, those are cut off in the way that I presented the slide here. So on my mind. Isn't that so cool? I put the F minor six there. On my mind. I played the F7 there. So any of those, and you go back to it and then. Uh, if you can hold the note out better than me, then that would, <laughs> that would be nice. Um, I start to waver on my pitches there. So that is the arrangement I made for you. And I think you will find that if you already play guitar, even a little bit, some basic open string chords, that these are all extremely accessible. So amazing to learn this colorful, beautiful, classic, timeless tune. Um, I just have always loved this tune um, and yeah, wanted to teach a simple way to play it. And I'm not dumbing it down. I'm not watering it down because, oh, I got to teach this and, and make it easier. This is how I like to play it, right? And I like to play it in many ways. I like to really go deep on a song and play it in different keys and play it all over. The, but, the, but if I was going to maybe perform a version of it with just me strumming the guitar, I would do exactly this version. I, I'm not doing some simple uh, like, oh, here's a starter version for you. Like, no, this is this is the way it will sound the best in like a singer-songwriter setting or just a single guitar accompaniment. 
in my opinion, which is why I made it that way. So uh, if you were to look at the lead sheet like this, uh, then it kind of confuses again. Also, this is in a different key. It's written in F, um, F uh, the key of F has all these symbols, the triangle, all this stuff. So yes, you have Georgia on my mind now. I'm excited to post many more song tutorials like this to help people play uh, classic songs with nice, simple arrangements. But what if you wanna go play some other tunes um, and you don't have a tutorial like that yet and you wanna be able to more quickly get tunes down? Well, this is that extra uh, special thing that I said I was going to show you. It's so simple actually and uh, of course, it's a whole other method. So I have a free download for you you can get. It's called any the Any Jazz Chord Method. These eight shapes right here are all you need to play any chord of this tune or any other tune. It's jazz tunes in particular, jazz arrangements. It shows the shapes right here, but download that booklet if you want it. There's a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord. And literally these eight shapes, you can play any of these. So like this F major seven in the front, that shape is uh, right here. This E half diminished is, that shape is right here, okay? And that is this one right here. The A7, that shape is, there it is, <laughs> that's the second one there, A7. So of course I have it written out much better for you and I explain what all the symbols mean and what to ignore and how to actually make this work to play any, any jazz tune from any lead sheet uh, with just eight shapes. There's also a video that goes along with it that you can watch to get that down. So assuming you wanna learn other songs more than just Georgia On My Mind, uh, it's nice to have those chord shapes. They're not the same type of thing we learned here with these open string chords, but they get the job done and people use them all over the place. Okay, I'll give you my second bonus now, how we can walk between some of those chords, which I really love doing this, so check it out. I can't help but add this to the lesson. I just want to suggest a couple places where you can walk bass notes between the chords to enhance the feel even more you know, to your taste if you like the sound of it. So in this first chord, Georgia, okay, this note is in the chord even though not playing it. That's the five of the chord, five, one, five. So you can go do, 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 down to E7. Ah, so cool. George, Georgia, do, 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 do. I didn't even do it in the right time, but Georgia, do, 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 do. Georgia. Okay, from here, this is where you can start to find your own. Any chord where you're about to go to the lowest note of one of those chord shapes I gave you, and you have something in the other chord that's near it, dun, 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 just walk between it, right? So you're playing this E7 chord, and the next chord is this uh, A minor, okay? So you, from this note, you can go do, 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 to move there. Now we have this intentional bass movement throughout the song. Okay, so Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through, just an old sweet song keeps. Okay, I'm on E, I'm sorry, I'm on A7. And this note here can go dun, dun, dun. Right, so you have to find some of those for yourself, but I just wanted to show you uh, how much potential there is in that. If you were serious about this and wanted to add that to it, it can be super, super fun. And good news, I have a video all about it to help you even more with that general concept to how do you fill in the space, the right amount of notes depending on how many you have to play, right? So da 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 versus do 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 do, right? I have a tutorial about that. I'll put a link in the description to that and I will also put it on the screen here at the end as kind of a watch next suggestion. I very much uh, suggest that you watch that if you are interested. I post a new lesson video every week. My next week's lesson is a piece number four in a series of seven easy classical guitar pieces for beginners that I am going through. So don't miss that if you're interested in classical guitar please subscribe and follow. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.